Have you ever wondered what rewards you get after hunting 100 monsters in one expedition? Today I try to hunt that number of monsters to see just how many rare materials they can yield. The main goal will be getting 10 or more rare materials in the reward screen, as well as 6 other goals to hit. Hopefully I would reach them by the time I beat the last monster. But once I go in the expedition, I cannot leave until I've beaten all 100 monsters. I prepare 2 gathering palicos for this since plundering helps with getting more rewards. The first monster I fight is Pyre Kadaki since it's one out of four subspecies available in the Citadel. After taking it down and checking it off my list, monsters 2 through 7 were pretty standard all things considered, but as I was fighting the 8th monster, something showed up earlier than expected. <gasps> oh my gosh, Crimson Glow Valstrax is on the map. I took down monster 8 and immediately hunted Valstrax, which was my ninth monster, and after beating it, that's one goal completed. I hunted a Camellios, which was monster number 10, and then did something to make this more interesting. I have to spin this wheel every time I take down 10 monsters in this expedition. Whatever the wheel lands on, I have to use for the next 10 monsters. MH3 you moveset, oh my gosh. Yeah, this basically meant my moveset was limited. And because the switch axe is way different now than it was in the third generation, I had to switch to sword and shield, the weapon that has the classic combo that I can use. Gormagala was the next monster I encountered, and unfortunately I had to fight it with only third gen moves. If I broke the rules, I would have to stay still and allow myself to get hit. I struggled a bit during the first half of the fight, but soon I got used to the 3 you combo and did pretty well. But there was something I was doing wrong for the next 8 monsters that I'll mention soon. After beating Gore, the only other monster on the map was Arzuros, and since I got used to the 3U combo, the fight was fairly trivial since I could combo it without getting hit. In fact, I did better against Arzuros with this moveset than I would with the regular one, which I found weird since I normally don't like fighting this monster with said weapon. Volvodon went pretty much the same way Arzuros did, and Tigrix surprisingly went down in a short time. Monster 15 was... another Volvodon. Just as I beat it though, Malzino appeared which was good because one of my goals was to hunt the three lords. But of course, I had to fight it with the 3U moveset. I was getting kinda wrecked, but as I was fighting it, I picked up something that would count towards another goal. Oh, there we go! Mount Sentinel Bloodstone! That's one mantle, that counts! That was one down, two mantles to go. It took a while, but I beat Malzino, which was the 16th monster, and was also one out of the three lords left in my list of goals. I hunted yet another Volvodon, but as I was in combat with it, a formidable monster spawned. Silver Rathalos. I need to go after that. But with 3U moveset, that's gonna be tricky. Tricky is right, because I couldn't do much to it other than hit the legs a bunch. I even wirefalled on accident and had to hold still to get hit while my health was low. But I dealt decent damage when he was in the super mode. After 23 minutes of 3U comboing, I struck it out of the air and got my 18th monster down with another goal complete. At this rate, I might get all my goals in this expedition. I hunted another Arzuros, which was just as easy as the first, and began hunting Anjanath. This is where I find out that I've been doing the combo all wrong. Okay, I don't know how I missed this, but apparently I've been doing this wrong. Instead of this move, I can do that move. Yeah, so apparently they never got rid of the horizontal round slash from Sword and Shield. The way you do the attack now is by pressing both X and A following an attack from the standard combo. I don't know why they changed it since you could simply press A following an attack in the older games. So after learning how to do the proper attack, I used it for the rest of the fight and took down the 20th monster. Here we go. No challenge. Okay, I'll take it. Now I was back to using my trusty switch axe for the next 10 monsters. After taking down Kushala and Tigrix and starting the fight with Gasarag, Flaming Espinas appeared, which was the next monster needed for my goal of hunting all subspecies in the Citadel. After taking down Monster 23, I went after Flaming Espinas. I had to be careful though, since he had a move that could one-shot if I wasn't careful. Despite having no restrictions though, I struggled with this fight. I got tackled a lot and was out of my element halfway through, but I did see the one-shot move coming and dodged the following attack. But the fight ended up taking longer than I'd like to admit, even though I was using a pretty good switch axe set. Eventually, I took it down, which made it the 24th monster, and the second subspecies checked off the list. I hunted Tigrex again, but as I was fighting it, I found this. <gasps> oh my gosh, a mantle! With two mantles down, there was only one left to obtain. I took down monster 25 and was now officially a quarter of the way there. I then swept through monsters 26 through 30 without much issue, and it was now time to spin the wheel again. 
blue gear only. Oh man, I hope there aren't any fire monsters that spawn on the map because my blue armor is weak to fire. <laughs> Unfortunately, that hope would soon fade with the next few monsters. I was doing well against the 31st monster, but then one appeared that would soon be my downfall. <gasps> Seething Basil Goose. That's gonna be my next target. Oh, but that he does fire. Uh, I took down the Arzuros, then began the fight with Seething Basil. I knew I was weak to fire, but if I was skilled enough, I could take it on with little issue. Right? Oh my gosh! He just took out half my health with a fire attack. Oh my gosh, that does so much. Ooh. Oh snap. Oh, yeah, I was getting destroyed. My fire weakness definitely showed, but there was one major oversight. Wait a minute. Why do I only have 676 defense? I thought I upgraded this ar- what am I doing? I forgot to upgrade the blue only armor before starting the expedition. I did make a comeback though. Oh, but sadly I couldn't keep up the momentum as I was still getting bodied left and right. I eventually threw myself at the thing until it was finally down. Oh my gosh, finally. When I went to restock after the fight, I didn't realize I was starting to run out of items. Even worse, I went outside the tent and there was only one monster on the map that I didn't want to fight. I really don't want to hunt a Rejang again, so I'm just gonna wait for the next monster to spawn. And wait, I did but it would seem that RNG just wasn't on my side. It looks like the next monster appeared and it's a Valstrex. <laughs> and things were rather unfortunate again. Kushala Deora. Uh, okay, fine. That's good enough. And just like with Seething Basil, I struggled hard, used a lot of potions, and threw myself at the Kushala until it died. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> the next two hunts were slightly more doable, but not by much since I couldn't take hits well. But then one of the monsters on my list showed up. Garengom! <gasps> That's one of the three lords. Finally, something I can hunt. So I skipped the Camellios and hunted the Garengalm instead, making it the 34th monster and the second lord checked off. After that, I finished the fight with Camellios, successfully hunted a Seregios, and fought two Zenogres back to back. Once I beat the 40th monster, I was finally done with the blue gear challenge. Give me a good one, give me a good one. No wyvern riding. This one was pretty doable because of the option to turn off wyvern riding after an attack, which I already had off to begin with. It was at this point that I wanted to use the charge blade, but as I was hunting another flaming espinos, I struggled because I kept missing my elemental discharges. But then the third and final lord showed up and I ditched the espinos to go after it, this time with switch axe. I took down the Luna Garon, completing the goal of hunting the three lords. I decided to finish the fight with flaming espinos and easily swept monsters 43 through 50. We were now officially at the halfway mark. Come on. For you move set. Oh my goodness. There was only one weapon type I could use for this challenge. Charge blade. I did poorly with it earlier, but I was more confident here since I knew the for you move set well. Though I will say when hunting monster 51, it took a bit to get used to the combo. After beating monster 52, another subspecies spawned. <gasps> A subspecies I haven't hunted yet. Oh, but this one's gonna be mildly annoying. The fight with Auroracanth wasn't as annoying as I expected, and it didn't take that long to beat it considering my limitations. This marked the third subspecies down, and only one remained. Blood Orange B10. I was sure it would spawn soon, since it was a pretty common monster. I did pretty well on monsters 54 through 60, not to mention the fight with Gore was fitting with the 4th gen moveset. I was 60 monsters in, but still no Orangutan. Huh. I figured this was fine since it appears often in the Citadel, so it would spawn at some point soon. Come on, give me something good. No wire bug. I would normally be fine with this challenge considering I could just use the Iceborne moveset. I decided on Charge Blade because I didn't really need wire bug with this weapon type. But once again, I was having a hard time despite this being my main weapon. So I ended up going back to Switch Axe, but the problem was without wire bug, the weapon would suffer because of its lack of counters and defensive maneuvers. The only form of defense I had was evasion, so when I fought Monster 62, it took a while to get the hang of the wireless moveset. It was a good thing I had evade extend because I heavily relied on it to avoid attacks. I also disabled the ZL button in my switch menu so I couldn't accidentally use the wire bug. Once I got used to the moveset, I was able to beat monsters 62 through 70, but I will say I actually enjoyed this part since I had to play switch X very differently because I mostly use wire bug when using the weapon.
No buddies. Oh boy. The only real downside to this one was being the only target for the monsters and not benefiting from plundering. I took down monsters 71 and 72, but when I was fighting Valstrax, another monster in my list of goals appeared. <gasps> Scorn Magnamalo! As soon as I noticed, I immediately began hunting it. But because it's been a while since I fought Scorned, I didn't remember its moveset and got bodied as a result. Oh my gosh! But once I came back, I was able to beat it which meant the goal of hunting Scorned Magnamalo was complete. Afterwards, I finished the fight with Valstrax. But even through all of this, there was still no sign of Orangutan. I've hunted 74 monsters and not a single one has spawned. No matter, I would come across one at some point no doubt. After beating monsters 75 through 80, it was time for the final challenge before the wheel reset. No decorations. So I had to remove all decorations from my current armor set. The only thing I have to worry about is having only one level of protective polish and no speed sharpen. As a result, I struggled a bit to maintain my sharpness against the first five monsters. Anytime I needed to sharpen, I would either do it during a monster's animation or throw a flash bomb to cause a distraction which didn't always work. Oh my gosh, how did he know? But as I beat Monster 86, I was pleasantly surprised by what I had just found. Shinies? Oh my gosh, I got the third and final mantle from a shiny drop. Let's go. I managed to complete almost all my goals. I found the final mantle, which took a while, but no, Orangutan still. I managed to beat Monsters 87 through 90, and the wheel was now reset. Here we go. No wyvern riding. Okay. It was time to take on the final 10 monsters, but I wouldn't be satisfied if the orangutan didn't spawn. I would have to hunt 9 monsters at most to increase the chances of the monkey appearing. Monster 91 down. No orangutan. Monster 92 down. Still nothing. Monster 93 down. Not that monkey! I was clearing out monsters trying to get orangutan to spawn, but I was left with repeat after repeat. But once I beat the 98th monster, I was gonna have to wait because once I hunt 100 monsters, I can't hunt anymore. I was trying to occupy myself with fishing, but even then, still more repeats. Valstrex, ugh. I was getting impatient, so I hunted the 99th monster, hoping that the orangutan would spawn, but my cup runneth dry. At this point, I didn't want to hunt any other monsters, so I decided to just sit and wait for the current monsters to despawn so that orangutan would appear. This would take hours, but I was willing to do anything to complete the subspecies goal. Ah, Teostra. Oh, come on. Volvodon, are you kidding? Malzino, come on. Another Volvodon, are you kidding? Ray Jang. <laughs> Many hours have gone by with no sign of orange B10, and because this was taking so long, I was beginning beginning to think that it doesn't spawn in the citadel during expeditions. How many monsters did you hunt on your longest expedition? Blood Orange B10 is right here, so it can't spawn in expeditions. I I've just been cursed or something. I kept waiting and waiting, but still no sign of the fire monkey. But then at some point, I realized my mistake. I had been focusing so much on this one monster that I forgot about the main goal of this challenge. The only goal that really matters here is the 10 or more rare materials in the reward screen. So I'm just gonna wait one last time. If this fire monkey doesn't spawn, I will just slay the last monster and then just get this challenge over with. I'm tired of waiting. After waiting another hour, the next monster spawned in and again, no orangutan. So I began hunting Tigrex as the last monster, but as I was doing so, one of the monsters despawned which gave me a bit of hope, but I wasn't counting on it. If the monkey did spawn in, I would forget about Tigrex and go after it. But this just goes to show that no matter how hard you try, you can't always reach every goal you have. Sometimes you have to focus on the main goal to get where you want. And with that, the monster that spawned in was not Orangutan, so I finished the fight with Tigrex, which was now Monster 100. With no more monsters to hunt and not being 100% satisfied, it was time to see the results. I I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. Ah, oh, man, I'm nervous. I'm afraid to look. Let's, oh, man. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Two, three, four, five. Gotta go down. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. I didn't get more than five. That's the only mantle I get from this.
this. I spent so long only to come this short. Hunting that monkey wouldn't have done anything. No. Well, I guess this is what happens if you hunt 100 monsters in one expedition. I got only half the rare materials I was expecting, but hey, at least I got a lot of other materials. Ever wonder what happens when you hunt a monster earlier than you're supposed to? Consider watching this video next as I try to find out what happens if you hunt Lagaiacris early.